marvellous complexities of the world we inhabit, indeed, for life itself. And we need to reverse this. Of course, the brain is embodied, but it's only embodied because the body itself is inworlded. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. You finished two minutes ahead of schedule, so we have lots of time. <laughs> Hi, um, Micah Allen again from Aarhus University. Uh, really, a beautiful talk. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I, I, they say the friend of or the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So I don't know if you like this empirical data, but I think I can give you a little bit of empirical ammunition. Uh, Dunbar has made much ado about this notion that there's a significantly more prefrontal gray matter in human beings compared to mm, mm. non-human chimps and things. Uh, but a recent meta-analysis of structural brain scans actually showed that the prefrontal gray matter was not significantly different from what you would expect based on body size increase alone. What was different was the prefrontal white matter. And this is significant because uh, neurobiological studies show that white matter has much higher degree of plasticity than gray matter. There's something like a 7% turnover in the synapses per week in certain areas of the brain. And, and I think this fits nicely with your picture. To, to bring this into, back into Dunbar, he's recently come into my area, which is the research of internet and social media technologies, saying that you know, the use of Facebook and social media technologies is exploding our brain's ability to deal with, you know, we're going way past our 150 number. Which to me is just ridiculous because I don't feel overwhelmed by my ability to use social media technologies at all. So I guess that would just be mostly a comment that mm. maybe there's even some empirical weakness to his theory and that maybe a better picture is like this squiggly line one you have here because a more plastic brain is more able to specialize and use tools <laughs> and do the kinds of things that Andy Clark tends to talk about with yeah. integrating tool use into our mental fabric. So, well, thank you very much. Awesome I, talk. I, I, I mean, it also helps. That, that helps me with a with a thing that's always nagging, nagging at the back of my mind, which is that, um, and, and I know which which Robin would would say to me if I argued against him. He said, "Look, hell, you you, you see a room full of of, of uh, human beings as we see here, and they've all got bloody big big brains, and they're using up all this energy. And have you come up?" He would say to me, "Have you come up with any kind of explanation of why that should be so?" And I said. Not my business. I don't like your terms. No, it's a slight problem that I, I'm not sure how to deal with it. It seems very uneconomical that I should be representing everyone's <laughs> representations of the world at the same time to make some statement. Absolutely, yeah. I can, I, I mean, I... Thanks for the quote, Tim, and the lovely talk. Um, actually, I decided that I preferred your compost heap to the, the, bi the bindweed around the axles. <laughs> Maybe we'll go that direction in future. I wanted to come back briefly to Dunbar, whose latest book I reviewed last week, um, in which Dunbar's number appears to be, depending on how you read it, 3, 7, 150, or 1,500. Oh. And like you... <laughs> As I commented in the review, I'm not sure what Facebook and Twitter are actually going to do with the number of people who claim to want to be my friend as a result of um, who I've never heard of at all. But I wanted to come back to Emily Dickinson, um, and I want to um, have a note of caution about it, because by one's metaphors, you should know people. And I'm impressed by the number of highly reductionist neuroscientists who love Emily Dickinson and quote her at the beginning of their books. In oh. particular, I have in mind here Jerry. Edelman, right. writing extensively about consciousness and what he calls neural Darwinism, and Dickinson features there. And the reason why she features there is because they make precisely the relationship of the, the convergence of mind to brain. Mm. So when Dickinson says brain, um, they read it as saying mind is brain. I would say, and I guess you would say, the mind is wider than the brain. So let's stay with St. Augustine, I think. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't know I was going to... I, I come as a completely naive person so far as Emily Dickinson is concerned. And it was, but I, I see your point. You can, and I liked Augustine's point. It's, it's pretty cool. I'm Theresa Schillhub, Gnosis. 
Um, and uh, I, first I want to thank you for a wonderful talk. Um, and then I, I don't want to be devil's advocate because actually I really like to talk. On the other hand, I am a biologist. And when you talk about uh, everybody being social, all animals being social, then of course I was brought up in a tradition in which we were told that primates are more social animals than anyone else. Um, so I would like to ask you, don't you see that there's any, in your opinion, is there, isn't there any difference between the social behaviors of, for instance, primates or humans and ants? Now, of course, ants, uh, the ant example is a very bad example, but uh, then the spider, for instance. Yeah, well, I, I think the answer to that is that, that clearly... Um, there are a whole lot of different kinds of animals and they all behave in different ways. And often even within the same species, we get lots and lots of, of different b behaviors. And, and, uh, and we can describe those differences and that's all fine and I have no problem with it. I begin to have a problem when um, suddenly there are two buckets and into one bucket goes social and into another bucket goes non-social. Um, anthropologists have a bit the same problem with culture, you know. What, we put one something in one, in one bucket or the other. And then once, once you start doing that, then you get into the problem, the people start asking, is this animal more, more or less social than the other one? And as soon as you start asking questions like that, then you must have some standard, some measuring rod, by which you calibrate sociality across species. And then you're no longer into simply describing the way in which this or that animal goes about their business. They are involved in a comparative exercise in which there are two poles of highly social and not social at all, and reptiles down at the bottom and primates and humans up at, up at the top. And, and, and so, so in that sense, um, in the sense in which social is most commonly used in, in uh, biology and studies of animal behavior, I think it's actually um, rather unhelpful and I would, I would rather simply remove it and, 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 and simply talk about what animals do um, without the baggage that comes with the concept of, uh, of society. Um, but then I thought, for the purposes of this argument, well, maybe there is another sense in which we could retain the social, but in a very, very different sort of, sort of meaning. Um, maybe more Latourian, I don't know, the, the sort of... The one that, as in not, not, not bound in any sense by what kind of thing you're talking about, but more to do with just, just saying something about the, the way the world is, which is that it's, it, it is through and through relational. So maybe you wouldn't like to uh, adopt the, uh, if you're looking for quotes, Margaret Thatcher would be, of course, an option. There is no society, but I guess you don't want that. No. <laughs> Thank you very much for a marvelous talk. Uh, I agree with you that uh, of course, it's a regrettable f a fact that uh, now, at this point, neuroscience is so fashionable. And on the other hand, questions of, uh, uh, surrounding uh, social interaction become less funded. And, 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 mm -hmm. and many people believe, and politicians, especially in this country, as I heard yesterday evening, uh, seem to believe that, that, that if they put a lot of money into neuroscience, all the other questions might be solved. Uh, and, and it's certainly important to say, no, it's incorrect. Mm -hmm. And that is certainly not the case. Uh, uh, it, so, it's certainly important to look at, uh, at, at social sciences, and uh, I admire your work in, in, in this area. Uh, however, uh, I should say that with regard to your critique of Na uh, Dunbar, uh, th you made a few claims which I cannot uh, fully um, share with you, because uh, or, or I think, to put it very strongly, I would say they are false, even. Uh, <laughs> I hate to say that, I should say. Uh, one of them is, of course, to say, well, the relationship of an individual doesn't just, uh, isn't exhausted uh, by the relationship to other uh, individuals of the same species, but they are relationships to, to plants, to animals, uh, uh, from, from, human, uh, from a human being. This is all good and fine. However, the intensity of the interaction and the time spent per day is maybe different. And if you, if you look at certain, uh, certain monkeys that groom each other all day, mm. almost all day, then this is a different kind of interaction uh, compared with me watering the, uh, 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 the, the flowers because I have been told to. 
and uh, 